Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Guys, huh? No, I'm Johnny B. And together we are Modeling for Advantage. Part two, mate. Kit review. Part two. Blood and Plunder. Amazing. Uh, Blackbeard versus Maynard. Two player start yeah, set. Yeah, good start set. We established you're quite into the two player scene. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. So I need to start with an apology because I think in the previous video I just kind of cast these to one side. Dude, the, bases, the, bases. the bases are actually sweet. The bases, I measured them earlier. Uh, they're 20 mil bases, which for mil. miniatures of this size is actually rather uh, small. Yeah. They do fit on them though. We'll come to that in a minute. But they, they've got planking. They're, planking. So they look good on deck. And wharfs and jetties, but probably less good in the undergrowth. <laughs> but you know, for theming it, I oh, think oh, I think that's a really good. nice inclusion. Yeah, yeah it's nice. So, just, uh, not just... oh. so we uh, went away and we had a build of these because obviously, I, when I saw this kit advertised, I was like, I need to know how difficult this stuff is to build. Well, yeah, I mean, so you built the the I boat went away and boat with the ship. Face. Yeah, you built the the ship. I went away with sloop. I you went know, with sloop. Yeah. Now, I knew there was a video of this. There is. To build already up is there. Is it Blood and Pigments? Blood and Pigments. Sir. I'll put a link out. It's if a you good want video. a proper, like, how to build this, it's been done by a guy who knows his onions. Yeah. He yeah. puts it together and yeah. it makes sense, mostly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I knew that was out there, but I didn't want to watch it. I wanted to work off of the IKEA instructions that you're given in the box. The exploded diagram. Exactly, the exploded diagram. Yeah. So I did that, and I stumbled across a few problems, mainly due to me being an idiot. Right. Well, so it's the ginger thing, right? It's the ginger thing. Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> the whole goes together, and most of it goes together pretty well. The it's big pieces. Quite self-explanatory. Yeah. Even from the diagram, and even if you haven't got that, it kind of works. Yes. It fits in. However, <laughs> be mindful. When you've got the sides together, it does sort of have a bit of a, I don't know. So the whole shape contained? is, is bowed. No, the other one. Bowed, thank you. It's bowed. It, uh, it bulges out towards the middle and then comes in again. Which is beautiful. Which is, and, and how ships are. Exactly right. But however, that doesn't help when you forget to put this central uh, wall in here. So there's a, there's a plate for like the sort of entry to the captain's cabin or wardroom or whatever they've got behind that like door, a, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that space. face goes on separately. Yes. So before you've glued the hole together, you, you need, need that, that on. In. You yeah. need that okay. on. Um, but you'll be pleased to know it is bendy enough that you can mm. actually still uh, get it in you there. Kind of you kind of pinged it in. I managed to get enough bend on it to, to slap it in there. Um, yeah, so it does go together okay. Yeah. There are a few problems, especially as it's not, um, it's not numbered or lettered or anything yeah. so it's it's visually and if you know about sloops and how they're meant to look then i'm sure yeah it would be which is another better. disadvantage and i i had no idea whatsoever yeah, yeah. um yeah. so yeah, yeah go about that you build a lot of model kits in your town but you don't know what a sloop looks exactly. like so what you're trying to get to exactly yeah all right so um of of those then um i think i think the thing to point out is probably that there are parts that are very mm. similar but they're actually different there's lots of little bits. Yeah. There's, lo there's lots of little bits. So particularly like here, where you see what the two pieces of the, of the mast. Yes. How this this connecting piece here, it, it looks just like a like a piece of plastic with two holes that you slot exactly. in. Exactly. There's three. Of but those. there's three of those, and they're all different sizes <laughs> for the different bits. I did actually put this. What are these called? Spars, I think. Spar. We'll go with that. Maybe. I did actually put that spar on there <laughs> initially, and I was like, right. I'm not so sure about that. Um, and yeah, as you say, those three pieces with the holes, just check it. And that, like blood, and, that blood and pigment thing, you, yeah. you just got you just watch but it. But it's a bit of dry fitting, is, is, yeah, is what yeah. you But you just need it's to realise they look very similar, but they very are similar. slightly different, aren't they, right? Um, so there's that. So then in relation to the gun ports, because the gun ports are separate pieces. They are separate pieces. Now, they're quite interesting because they've got sort of a half hinge on there, but there's no, like, little... Um, there's nowhere to put it. It's not guided in. It's not keyed or anything. There's no. There's no keying here. So you go in from this picture, and I'm trying to <laughs> zoom in by doing this <laughs> yeah, just right, to see yeah, how yeah, it fits. Yeah. Now, 
as to which way round they go, there's there's actually some hinges uh, modelled on there. Can you oh, see? And that they're on the underside. Yes. So there is a right and wrong way around to fit these. Yes, which I found out after doing it the wrong way. <laughs> I, it made you then sense like to looking me, at the them and like, oh, me up, and I'm like, yeah. that doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. So the the metal hinges, and obviously they're on the inside. That's where hinges go. Yeah, I yeah. guess. But you didn't know, you didn't have to look for I them. I didn't know that. And yeah. if if you were to put the little um, the hinge nubbins as they were on the internal side of this, yeah. It would look wrong, and, and you wouldn't be able to have it open unless you right. had it opened internally. Right. So it's a bit weird like that. It's a bit counter it's a bit to what it is. So, but it does. Once you figure that out, mm. you can put it just under this uh, this little beam, and it fits in quite nicely. So mm. you know, it does work. So um, in the the other thing in relation to that, so you can glue them open or closed. Yes. They're not an exactly perfect fit, is that right? No, they're, you need to be quite, quite generous with the glue if you're going for, yeah. if you're going for closed gun ports. But um, this particular uh, gun ports at the back, these this pair here, is there's no access into mm -hmm. this space once you've glued it together. Nope. So if you want to have a cannon in there, that's uh, one that's run out, which we haven't got <laughs> on ours, you would need to glue the cannon in there in position and paint it before yeah, you, you assemble to. the ship if you want if you want that completeness yeah i mean some people will paint the inside of that anyway because yeah. they're a bit like that whereas yeah, you I, can do, yeah. if you're someone who can paint the underneath of your vehicles it's fine glue it in and just paint the bit of the gun that sticks out exactly but you might be more troubled by that um maybe i don't know well you Obviously not, because I've got the ports open and there's no gun <laughs> and inside. There's no gun in there. But I figured it would be dark enough that it, it's not really going to matter. You would usually see it, yeah. And yeah. it was really fiddly. That's another thing. <laughs> if you aren't going to have it closed, most probably want to glue those back ports on if they're going to be closed before you seal the hole. Yes, because for the same reason. You, you can't get your finger front and back yeah. to hold it in place. Because of the hinge nubbins, if you yeah. try and put it in and, yeah. and position it, there's a big chance it's just going to fall straight yeah, into the hole. Yeah, I mean, we're probably making this sound a bit, a bit more difficult. No, and, yeah, and it's not. It's fine. It's a bit of common We're trying sense. to teach you what we have learned by doing it, right? Problems that we come across yeah. as noobs or... Yeah, <laughs> as noobs or... <laughs> um, there was another little piece, and, it, and it's interesting because of this exploded diagram, it's over here. That was so funny. And, it, and it, there's no indication of what it is, really. It, it looks takes quite a while important. to find it because it comes in two halves. Yep on the sprue. <laughs> so you look at your fan and it's like, well, where does that go? Is that part of the rubber, rudder apparatus? Yeah. Is that like a bucket with a with a rope coming out of it? What is it? It's a completely optional piece. It's a bilge pump. It is a bilge pump. And you get two of them. So. You get, and you get two of them. And there's, it's not clear precisely where they would go, but it's basically tubes go down to the, to the bilge, the lower part of the ship, to pump out the water. Yeah. Because obviously when a ship starts flooding, this is the best way of getting the water out, is you pump it out. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, for a moment, I thought it was the little turny bit. Yeah, we, we, we were just think, like in more... Because of the size of these, we weren't sure whether it was like, glue this together, and then is it and one of these you, other tiny pieces? Yeah, exactly. But it isn't. It's not. It's a bilge pump. It's a it's a bilge pump. Um, that was that. If you're planning to leave the gun ports closed, another thing worth bearing in mind is the amount of space on deck. These mm. these cannons not run out are going to take up because they're quite, you know, the, yeah, there's still well, a lot of competition got, for space on once deck. Once you've got six of them. Yeah. So run out, they're a bit more space efficient. Yeah. Um, but as anyone who's kind of buying it, buying this kit or whatever that isn't necessarily made of pan and planets, I like I like this Big in a very versatile terrain. way. It's a bit of scenery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sure. uh, you know, it's it's a really nice piece of scenery for a lot of a lot of potential games. If you're doing that kind of landing part, you still might want that somewhere on the edge of the board. Yeah, for sure. What's you so know. exciting is that it's a bleeding plastic boat. It's a yeah. hard plastic boat. And I hope it's the first of many. I hope they do. Did you want to say anything about the mast? Uh, the mast is quite weighty in one direction on the sloop. Um, you could glue it in; that would be no problem. But it's got quite it's the storage, silhouette. isn't it? It's it's big. It's big. Um, there's if, a metal ruler if, behind you, John. Got, How big is it? If you've got it? a Detolf cabinet, glass cabinet, it would fit in. If you haven't right got there. any metal ruler. Oh yeah. Is it a foot? Yeah, it's. It's just over a foot. <laughs> the, yeah, so in terms of putting this away, yeah. and you're going to have two of them when you bought this box. And the over a foot in length, if you include this. And anyone that collects miniatures knows it'd be lovely to leave it out on a shelf or something that's going to collect a lot of dust over Oh, yes. Yeah. A yep. lot of dust. For sure. 
um, and there are some more fragile parts. So we reckon you should magnetise this. If you right? can, I think magnet it. Yeah. Um, so you've got a place here where you can bore a magnet in, and it, it's connecting pretty close to the underside of this, don't you think? Although one thing I've not considered, Ooh. with that in mind, it, is the rigging and sails. Go on. Now, I know roughly how a, a sloop looks, and I know it's got this one here. Yeah. And if you've got the Belandra, you've got one there. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure there's one here as well. Yes, there is. So how do you magnet that and have that? I don't know. You... Well, you'd have to you'd have to rig it. So I, proper. I... So like hook it on with ropes and stuff and. Yeah, but I would I would probably use something like shoelaces. For the set so it can be so removable. you can tie it and untie okay, it. Okay, good. So, right. so there's a bit of a artistic bit of thought, license thought, yeah. there. This is very thick rope about for the that. scale. <laughs> but if you use something like shoelaces, it's doable. It's it's not. They're not huge. They're fairly cheap, and they're you used to tying and untying them. That's what I would. That's do. doable. Yeah. Okay. Cool. On the subjects of the sales, it doesn't come with sales. There's templates on their website. We were thinking about trying it with calico. I would they like save that. paper. So I they've got really that, because like Calico's got that right kind of collar to it as yeah. well. It's cheap fabric, texture. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but whether it'll hang right. And then you mentioned, this is one of the, is this the Bermuda? Because So yeah, this difference. confused me, because, uh, you know, I know nothing about it. And one's called the Bermuda Sloop, and on the cards, you got Bermuda mm. Sloop, and then one's called Belandra, and I'm like, okay, what is that? Is that the names of them? Is that the class of ship it is? Mm. I don't know. Um, but I did a, you know, <laughs> detailed research on Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it says the Bermuda Sloop is just a sloop that was around in Bermuda. And the right. Blandra is sloop in Spanish. Oh, right. Okay, so they are classes, because I really thought they were names. But then I went and looked at Maynard on Wikipedia. Yeah. The source of all knowledge. Oh, it's the best He had a 44-gun frigate. Yeah. <laughs> Something a lot bigger and than didn't this. Didn't old Blackbeard have... Uh, like Queen Anne's Revenge or something. But that, that could have been a sloop, because sloops, the thing about a sloop, so you know, your traditional tall ship be... has got square sails, yes. three masts. This very different sail arrangement is much more manoeuvrable. Mm. So it's not, it's not necessarily it's not always about... about guns. It, no, and it's not always about being faster. It's about being able to get away from what you need to get away from, and being able to and being able to catch and get at what you what you can get at, and maybe some things can get away. You could have the tall ship arrangement. The square sail is fast in the right conditions. It's a lot of sail yeah. in the right conditions. In the right conditions. This is it's a condition leveler, uh. <laughs> and, and for and for close in work and maneuverability. But yeah, I think a lot of piracy. The point about running up the black is like, okay, do people need to die today? No. Right, well then, this just, just give, a, us your, whoa, give us your you gubbins know. and mm. we'll let you go. Maybe. Absolutely. the gun, And in a lot of cases, the guns are more more for show. It's like, we're showing we're ready to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Probably not. <laughs> I wouldn't. I be. wouldn't. <laughs> no. What, for somebody else's stuff? I'm just, not really, mate. No. I'm just moving the coffee beans or whatever, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So the ship's really nice. Really, really nice model. Yeah. Uh, blood and Pigment. If you're going to build one yourself, get yourself some rubber bands. Yes. And once uh, you've built your first one, I think the second one is going to be yeah, so much yeah. easier. Uh, but it is, it is worth knowing about that that kind of different, slightly different. So there's some spars that go across. It's got yes. a square sail here, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it does. The one of the, Mar the Belandra one, I believe, the faster one. Yeah. Uh, it might not be. It's whatever. Kind of, I don't one know whether it's like one. a top gallant, but there's a little square sail goes up yeah, here. It's and just two little spars. And you've got the spars left yes. over from you yeah, can build here. either... Um, and you have to cannibalise the one mast <laughs> to make no. the other. That one flops in there. Yeah, so you get the idea. Ta da! Look at that. Oh, because that they are the masts are kind of keyed. These right, two are, right. and these have got lovely little holes, so you, you can. They, you they've can get actually got. If you really want to rig it seriously, they've got little holes and little um, eye, eye hooks and so forth on these. For where you attach the you ropes. could go to town on this. Yes, you could. But then you would have to leave it assembled. Yeah, <laughs> in, true, in full, true, full, truly. In its full glory. So th those are the ships. Really pleased with them. Uh, so you did that. I did that. And I Why built, that was long. I built but you the did dude the bros. dude blokes. Um, so the dude bros. Dude bros. Um, uh, look, there's a little bit of, little bit of curry on my... Oh. <laughs> look at that. See this authentically <laughs> used instructions. You were intent on using that. Um, so, 
each of the sprues of which you get four. It's got six guys on. Yep. A through E. This is quite important. If you're the kind of chap that when you get a new sprue, you pop all the bits off and say, I'm going to make my own way. I don't need instructions. Yeah. You're going to struggle, I think. Right. Because um, there's, a, there's a couple of things about it. Each body is posed quite different. Yes. And that's going to make a big difference to which arms are going to work. This is especially the case for the two-handed weapons. So I knew that the, the, the two-handed weapons were probably tricky, so I was going to make sure I tried, and tried to do some of those. So this guy, for example, what happens on the instructions is it, is it tells you these three arms, left arms, and these three right arms oh, no. are usable, and this guy can have a musket. Are they like linked by a little like line? Do not or assume that because they're parallel that they go. Oh, boo! <laughs> right. Okay. So um, the thing I struggled quite a long time, particularly with this guy, um, the two hands on the musket. Yeah. And I realised that I, a, a big part of it was I didn't know in what position he was ultimately supposed to hold it. The ease what, or the aiming? Yeah, yeah. Is it is it kind of down? Is it kind of up? Because that really changes the, the, the length of the arm and the crook in it. It does, so yeah. Just that rotation. Massively. And if I don't know which left arm, I don't know any of the two, yeah. and then the pose. <laughs> okay. The thing that transformed it was having a look at just Google Blood and Plunder um, uh, sailors and some pros have done it and some other people built one so I looked at what the po the ultimate pose was and then I was able to find it okay and then to make sure that I had learned from this you'll see and so I, I wrote I realised when I was building my second two-handed weapon I, I drew circles around the two <laughs> arms that went with the pike okay yeah yeah I mean it, it looks alright if you have the patience of Job this isn't a terrific problem for you but if you're going to build, knock out like 40 of these in, in one go, I, I wouldn't pop anything off the sprue you're not going to use. Because the other thing is, they're all wearing different jackets. Some of them are in jackets, some of them are in sleeves, some of them are in overcoats. And they've got different cuffs. Oh. So any arm does not go with any jacket. Right. Any two arms probably goes on most, like, e, Just from the, the e left and e right, any of these, will have the same type of cuffs. So you can make a little bit of mix and match there. Now to, to do them, you know, to, to avoid doing them a disservice, these are intended to be ship crew. These are intended to be sailors. And in the rules, they all have pistol and weapon and hand weapon. Sweet. You can give them the option to take to, to replace their pistol for a musket or something, or maybe it's extra. But these guys are intended to have a weapon in each hand, but you have options within that. Um, so... There was enough weapons on the sprue to make them however I wanted. There weren't six pikes, but there were six hand weapons. Cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. So this, I think, is, is a boarding pike. It's a very classic uh, naval weapon. I don't know how often they took them ashore. But you can imagine that, like, on ship, we're boarding. <laughs> pike is actually not a bad get weapon. Away. You get to get stab at you reach. quite early yeah, in, this, in this process. Um, and the, but the rules seem very very generous in terms of there's just there's hand weapons there's I've either got a proper weapon or I haven't right yeah so whether that's a sword or a pistol um, but you, so this guy had the option to have a sergeant type figure with an arquebus um, a blunderbuss a blunderbuss a, a blunderbuss which is which no is much way. that fits in the one hand but you can see here I'm not hugely happy with this pose I kind of chose the wrong arm so it's kind of coming in across Yar! And we wanted to get this video out so you could see yeah. how that was gonna that was gonna pan out mind, yeah. you know um but there is a lot of variety and you're gonna find it. if you do one hand weapon and one pistol you, you're not gonna have any problems with this at all yeah i can see that that seems to be good but with a lot of variety comes a lot of potential for mistakes absolutely so, absolutely yeah. but i'm really pleased with them and probably that so, as well as the weapons and the arms, not all the heads fit all the hats. Okay. Because they're keyed, and it's not a universal keying. 
But that should be, is that quite like one's a square, one's a circle jobby? Yeah, and you probably can cut them off, but because of the shape of the hats, you might then have a gap in somebody's head. Right. So in, my, in your first playthrough, as it were, I'd make all the models with all the different hat and head options that it, it suggests. Okay, And cool. only when you get to model number 40. Then you're like, okay, then you're like, okay I, I need this. to mix it up more now. Because there's a lot of heads and a lot of hats. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of variety in what you've been given, but again, it's worth money. And <clears throat> the heads, it's not like a kind of um, recess and, and, and sphere no. type socket like you might recognize from sort of Warhammer plate. or something. They are, yeah, the heads fit and they, they're sort of semi keyed, they're kind of facing a direction. Oh, yes, they've even, yeah, I see yeah. what you mean. Some of them are the way, slightly the way that they connect. The so again, W moving to swip swapping heads, it's, I'm sure it's doable. It isn't just, necessary just until you have lots of them. Yeah. Just be mindful, not every head goes, with Dilbert. every hat goes on everybody. Deal but with a pike and a crook <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if you start mixing it up, you might get some quite right, derpy yeah. looking Don't poses. Do that. Okay, cool. But there's loads of variety built into it. Good. Um, the other thing is then is the size. I think they're described as 28 mil. But I think that they're more like 32, maybe even bigger. Well, they do look taller, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit dark over here. Yeah. yeah. 30 mil. 30 mil. They're maybe so 28 to the nose. In between, yeah. Somewhere about that. But they're pretty big models, so they're not going to fit well against the sort of collection of 25s. Um, oh, yeah. I should have got like um. If you had like a, I don't know, a foundry pirate or something. Yeah, if you if you got some others, you might find these are a bit bigger, but the weapons and the hands, like a bit like War Games Atlantic, they're much more true scale, and that does mean the connection point on wrists to sleeves is small. Does that mean it's quite easy so, for them to snap off and slip? Well, but and... just in, so also in terms of preparing, in terms of put, getting a model together, so you probably want to glue the weapon on the arm. And then put the art, and then put the whole thing on the right. guy, just so that you can get a good grip of both parts and centre the wrist on the sleeve. Yeah, I want to look at on online at some other pictures. There's a few people who's like, that man's wrist does not go into his sleeve. <laughs> good enough though, but because right? they're, because they're quite small, because they're true scale hands, they are small. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. So that it's perfectly doable, but it, you're making the job much harder if you don't glue the hand to the arm first. Okay. A few tips. A few, few tips from us. But the finished product, lovely. They've got that real, that real kind of mixed bag flavor. Yeah, man. You know, that you want, that you want from sailors. R Royal Navy didn't have a uniform. It's I don't know when they introduced one, but in the Napoleonic era, there isn't a uniform. It's only like the soldier dudes, right? The yeah, Marines. soldiers, the Marines had a uniform. Sailors didn't. There's kind of an official sort of ish dress when you start seeing the stripy shirt, but they're not issued with it. Yeah, sweet. So they're wearing all kinds okay. of things. So yeah. even, so although these, you could say these are pirates, then mm, probably naval crews didn't look that different. <laughs> they may be, they may be a little bit smarter, but probably, only probably not if they're out in the Caribbean pirate hunting. The only distinguishing thing is the accent, I guess, that they talk. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, so that's that's those. I, th I think they're really nice. Yeah, I'm, man. I'm, it's a two. I'm very pleased set. with them. 24 dude blokes, two yeah, shoots, and all the rules uh, you need. Bits left over, if you just want to pass me that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my plan to build in the next set is to start by using the things that the I didn't alter, use. Yes. The alternate heads, yeah, the alternate yeah. arms, so forth. Um, we Each of these ships, stack cards have only got six cannon on, so you do technically have a pair left over. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool, yeah. You get Because it's cannon pierced with. for eight. The ship is pierced for eight guns. Yeah. But, but the, the stat card says you've got six. six. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, so that's that's another like sort of fringe benefit there. Yeah, for sure. For um, when you're on the shore. There you I go. also realized I didn't build the two character figures. You can see them all over yes. the place. Yeah. Um, Maynard and Blackbeard. Yeah. They're, but they're much more straightforward kits. Yeah. They're, they're monopoles. They are build this like this. Yeah. And those are the instructions. Look, we were de we're delighted with this product. Uh, I really like them. And thank you. And and we want to thank, again, Firelock Games for sending us a copy for review purposes. Awesome. Really grateful. We're going to take a look at Man of War at some point in the future. Yeah. Because I'm very interested in that as well. I love oh, it. I love Man it. of War. Is it? We keep calling it Man of War. It's, it's Oak and Iron. Oak and Iron. Oak and Iron is what it's called. 
Uh, the Kickstarter is shipping now. I know that for people that have got them. There were some delays internationally, but people are starting to get it. It also seems to be with UK distributors. So if you are thinking about buying this kit and you want to support the channel, there's an affiliate link for Wayland Games, which when I looked was 20% off. So this box was retailing all right. to Wayland with shipping for less than £100. Maybe go do that. We're not we're not able to stock it on the channel. We're not, no. we're not part of that supply chain, I'm afraid. Oh. So please have a look at the affiliate link if you would like to support us. All right, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.